Now I want to start adding some watercolor to this sketch. Now Tiny, the kitty cat here, is going to be largely defined by negative space because she's a white cat. So the space that is not the cat is what's going to define her more than anything. So for that reason, I want to start getting that in first. And then I'll add some shadows and, and things in Tiny herself and as we move along. I'm just, you know, focusing on a bit of rough edges here. You know, because she's a fluffy cat. And, you know, I'm trying to bury it so there's darker areas and stuff. And my colors are going to be mainly violet and yellow in this sketch. So one step at a time, easy does it, thinking about every move. And if you watch the earlier videos, you would you would see that I liked this composition of her having this negative space up here. And, you know, it kind of, I thought it gave that impression of that, you know, cat-like thing where they kind of sit where they're with their back to you sometimes. And I'm just kind of... You know, as I do this, I'm defining some fluffiness, scruffy fluffiness, as I once called her before. Don't get too particular about getting it exact, just let it happen. So I want to just get some of this in. And I'm going to be mostly yellow up here because I just want the glowing yellow to kind of pull us down towards Tiny herself. And this is just sketchbook paper. So this is a trial run, and if I really am happy with what I do, I'll I'll do the same sketch on, or the, the same watercolor painting on some good watercolor paper. And if anything, it's good to stay a little bit farther away because you can always go closer in, but if you do go too close in to start with, slowly your cat starts shrinking and getting smaller and smaller. And we, I can only do so much on this type of paper too. So it's a, it's a sketch, it's a trial run. Um, I just want to show you also that I put this in here to protect the other sketchbook pages. Now this actually is palette paper and it just kind of provides a barrier to protect the other pages because sometimes it can, when you wet, put a lot of water on it, can wet through and, and kind of wreck your next page. So I just kind of tuck that in there. And it's great for ink when I'm drawing with a fountain pen too because if you drop a blob of ink, it sometimes goes right through. Um, so I'm defining her a bit here. Just kind of want to, you know, gently just go in like this and just let it happen. And as I said, um, keep out a little bit, if anything. And the, the, the watercolor paint doesn't, doesn't really, um, work to its, full effect on this sketchbook paper. It is This is a good sketchbook paper because if you use just cheap sketchbook paper it's really hard to use your trial run sketch as to to see um, if it's things are going to work right. And this is all experimental like it always is. Oh, art is experimental isn't it? So not, not sure how I'm going to do the transition between this color and this color, but, you know, if you hang tight. And a lot of these techniques that I'm using here are, you know, they wouldn't be the type that I would really use on the good um, heavyweight watercolor paper. Just kind of got to do what I got to do here. It's sketching time. And don't be afraid also to get a rag in there and blot out some because I don't want that coloring book look where it's all the same. It's easier to achieve that with the good paper. But at the same time, you know, I want to test what I want to do later on here. So, so I got that so far. Where's my brush? There it is. And I'm going to come up here a bit more with the violet too because I really want to define her face. 
more than anything. I'm going to start getting a little bit tighter now, going right up to the lines. And also because this is a more defined spot, it's not fluffiness here. And if you have a shaky hand, which I tend to have sometimes, um, you know, you'll learn a style that works with that. See, I just put an extra blob there, but, but you know, don't be afraid to use that rag. And if you blot out too much, just put more back in. And you're not going to notice it that so much at the end. And here I'm, you know, more carefree and just letting the fluff happen. See, the biggest difference between this paper and the good heavy duty watercolor paper is your paint is going to have a better chance to just do its own thing. But, it, you know, we're getting some of that. this blossoming and the different texture in here. And I like how this is making her stand out her face stand out because that's what I want the important parts to really stand out so in this painting it would be her face and paws you know paws are one of my favorite parts of cat art I love paws they're so cute especially if they show toe beans we're not showing any toe beans here but someone asked about um just a video on drawing paws and painting paws and that's coming up for sure so you stick with us got all kinds of ideas i'm really only getting things started here and just allow these things to happen just these little you know these different bits okay i'm not going to fix that if you fix everything you lose that beautiful impressionistic look and just you know allow your energy to go into it too just paint right from the shoulder this is another thing that's it's a bit harder on on the cheaper sketchbook paper is is softening edges but that's okay it's just a sketch we'll go up into the yellow a bit here but we got to be careful with that because it once we go up into the yellow we got to end up adding more violet because um yellow and violet are complementary so they're going to cancel each other out and give you gray So that's why I said I'm not sure how I'm going to handle the transition here. Um, but the eye is going to be led more to the brilliant colors. So the gray can sometimes help you too, as long as it's not really yucky, muddy gray. The gray can help you guide the eye away from the gray areas to the brighter areas, because that's how our eyes are designed to, to act. And it's apparently from, because, you know, as humans, we are, we survive on a lot of different foods and we get different nutrients from different foods and they're different colors. So our eyes are attracted to those different colors to keep us healthy and it transfers over to art. So it's just kind of a fun fact. Okay. Um, let's see what's next. I never know totally what direction I'm going in and that's the beauty of art too. I want to get some more. I'm going to put my nickel azo yellow over here. I want to get some more of that and some stronger. Just kind of playing with it. And it's very, very different than it would look when I'm doing it on good watercolor paper. But I like this. Just kind of. You know, interesting shapes in here that kind of guide the eye around the painting. Now, I want to get a bit of stronger nickel azo yellow. And I want to get some into her eye. And her eyes definitely were golden. I don't know what this cat's color eyes are, my sample cat. Um, 
but Tiny's eyes were definitely gold and I got too strong in there. Use that rag, but just keep it so you have a dry spot. Um, so, because if you put a wet spot on it, you can transfer the paint that you got on there on to the onto your art and I let that be varied because that adds interest it makes it look more genuine I think so I'm just gonna ponder a moment here and decide what I think next I'll go in with some really diluted violets into her herself and give her some of those shadows that you'd see in her fur and right now I'm thinking I maybe added too many ink lines here I should have just left it in pencil um, but these might disappear when I start putting paint in. Because these aren't super duper important lines. They are important um, to a degree. But I don't want them to really stand out. I'm going to dilute some of this down. So I can start going in and giving her a bit of definition. Very carefully. Dry it on the rag first. Um, and then just almost a dry brush effect, so I'm kind of getting rid of some paint out of here. And, you know, just kind of quick. What I love about teaching art is I learn so much from teaching. You know, with the better paper, I'd be able to play with this more. But we'll do what we can. See, I've got a look of some fur there. And as I tell people all the time, it's not about painting every fur. Not for me anyways. It's, you know, just the impression of fur. Because if we get those little hints of fur, or, and we see that it's a cat, our brain tells us that that's fur. I have a lot of requests, people asking me to teach them how to paint fur, and all right, oops, I'm losing my picture here. I always tell people that the best way to paint fur is to not paint fur. So I just want to get that flow of her tail and just kind of, you know, just allow it to... I'm paying attention to this rhythm of the tail taking us up around here. And again, um, if you want to learn more about that, go back to one of the earlier videos in this series. This paw is farther back, so it would be grayed out a bit. You know, you can gray out some spots in the paws, too. And this is kind of a darker area here where the shadow, you can really see the shadow. So, just get it in as best I can. A bit of a line to her ear. And then I think next I'm going to need to let this dry a bit before I continue. But I'll talk about some of the other stuff that just happened over here. Such as this. Look at this beautiful blossom. You know, some people might see that as a fault. And, and the blossoming here. And it just adds character and life to the background. And it, this kind of, you know, goes in with the theme too. But if you must get rid of it, then I guess you get rid of it. You can take a damp, you can take your your um, rag, not a damp rag. You can take your rag and kind of get it out of there. And don't be afraid also to, you know, put in some wetter paint. And then just pick up the sketchbook and just allow it to kind of drip. Do its own thing. You can add lots of character that way. Just gonna leave that at that. I like that. Just kind of pick away with a wet brush, you know, just soften some of these edges. And this is way easier to do with the good paper, but you can do it with this paper. And I'm kind of leaving a little bit of a ridge of white along here just to help her stand out, to give that backlit look. In a sketch like this, you don't want to go too far with. 
because as I said, it's, it is a learning sketch like everything um, and you can overdo it so easily. You can get some more shadow in here. And you can even try to drag some of this in. Again, much easier with good paper. And that bit of her nose there. Well, oh, the paint's running away on me. We'll see what it does. I want to blot it up a bit there. There. Look at that. I like that. Kind of making her nose look a little narrow because her snout, but we'll fix that. don't really want to do a whole lot more on this now until it dries. So I think I'll leave it for another video. What I will do in the next one is I will define some of this more. I'll probably darken up along here. I'll take my pen back in. I'll define her nose. So all of those things. Stay tuned for the next video. So I hope you try some of these techniques. They're a lot of fun. And cats are awesome to draw, always my favorite. Thanks for watching.